Our first caller is Dwayne from Vietnam. Hey, Dwayne, how can we help you? Hi, uh, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to you guys for accepting me on this, uh, on this little questionnaire. And you guys do a brilliant job. I love listening to you and all your information that you put out there. Um, my question today is, so I've only just recently started working out for probably about a year, but I, I mainly did cardio, uh, a bit of hit and cardio here and there, body weight training. And I've only just started experimenting with barbell training. Uh, maybe in the last three months or so. Um, or also just recently started tracking food uh, because I had a really bad relationship with food and my body. I was just eating anything and then nothing at all. Uh, so tracking calories is making me identify, you know, how much I should be eating and also gain muscle. I've also used your um, tracker on your website to, to identify how much of nutrients or how many nutrients I should be consuming. Um, I've linked my fitness pal to uh, Google Fit. So it calculates how much I walk. I surf every every week. I do mountain climbing. I also do like long walks. So I should be consuming, according to um, the calculators, about 2,500 calories a day. But if I do my activities, it comes to, it says, Google Fit tells me that I've, I should, uh, or that I've burnt 800 plus calories. So my question is, should I be consuming 2,500 plus the 800 calories that I've burnt? Or should I just stick to 2,500? Because I don't feel like those numbers are right. Uh, I feel like I'm putting on a little bit more fat than I should be. Um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not, the scales are not really moving in my favor. So I'm a bit, a little bit confused and I wanted to, uh, your, your guys' opinion on that. Dwayne, how big are you? What's, uh, what's your size? I'm fairly light. I'm five foot seven. I used to be 72 kilos. I'm now 61.5. And have you been like all the exercise that you've been doing, the activities that you've been doing, are, are, have you been consistently doing that for quite some time? Yes, I've, I've walked about 12,000 steps uh, for at least about a year now. And I've recently started taking up dancing and mountain climbing and surfing in the last month or so. So I've just added on to that. That's a lot of activity for only 2,500 calories. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, even even though you're, you're size, okay, so you're not, you're not over 200 pounds, 2,500 calories for someone who is doing 12,000 plus steps a day plus – all the uh, activity that you're doing is is a lot in the first place. So, it, it, but you said you are you feel like you're putting on body fat by just eating 2,500 calories. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Well, I, I feel like my my lower belly has has gained a little bit more body fat than it used to. And then, what does the strength training look like right now? Uh, I'm doing it five days a week. Um, just this compound lifts really. Um, I'm new to it, so I'm doing my chest two days. Uh, legs two days and one day I do so five days a week so I would I would run something more similar to maps anabolic where you're doing strength training only two or three times a week and okay. uh, all the stuff that you're doing is it something that you don't want to stop doing because you you love hiking and, and going outdoors and doing all this stuff or are you open to scaling some of that back and putting more focus and energy towards the strength uh, I'm okay just scaling back to be quite honest because I am fairly tired. <laughs> I think the, the lack of sleep as well is not probably helping me in any way. Yeah. I, so I have a, I have a few more questions uh, for you, Dwayne. You, you said you had a bad relationship okay. with food. What did yes. that What did that look like? What were you Were you somebody that was really skinny? So you your relationship with food was to eat more to try and bulk up, or were you someone that was worried about? Being, having too much body fat, so you were you were uh, you know restricting. I was really really skinny fat to be honest. I had a like a beer belly and stuff, but I was a really like thin thin guy overall. But I had a beer belly, and I I just gave up at one point. I was like I just ate everything, and I just gained more and more and more and fat. And um, about a year ago, I decided that I wanted to just completely shred that fat. So then I just cut down my calories massively. And I ate the same thing for about six months, which was like oats in the morning and then boiled chicken and eggs, and that's it. Oh yeah. And that's what I that's what I knew that I, I thought that that was the way to go forward, you know. And the last six months has been a complete change where I've, I'm starting to learn nutrition. And I can't do that to myself. Okay, that and, explains and, a lot. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, and how do you feel uh, tracking calories and adding things up and adding up steps right now? Because you, uh, <laughs> you you know all these numbers, so it sounds like you're pretty meticulous. Yes. How, is that is that making you feel better, or, you, or is it adding a little stress to your life? Yes. It, like, no, no, no. I, I absolutely love it. Like I can sit the whole day and do it because I learned so much in terms of like how much a strawberry has and how much a kiwi fruit has and stuff like that. So okay. it's now, like kind of one of my passions. So it's something that I really enjoy. 
Okay, so there's nothing wrong with informing yourself um, with what food has and uh, you know how many grams of protein you need mm-hmm. and carbohydrates and fats and that kind of stuff. But here's what I'm hearing um, from you. I, I I feel like you're 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 just taking the obsession to a different level, which might be healthier than it was before. But I don't think meticulous tracking is is a good idea. In fact, what I would recommend if you were my okay. client. If you were my client, I would move you away from tracking and I would have you completely pay attention to performance. So strength, are you getting stronger and how do you feel? You mentioned earlier that you're really fatigued and tired. Mm-hmm. So that would t- mm-hmm. that would be a sign that you're you're either not eating enough or you're exercising too much and not giving yourself ample time uh, to recover. So I would look at strength and health, uh, sleep, libido, mood, skin, digestion. And I would stop placing focus on all these numbers aside from your strength because your the, the, the relationship you have with food, if it was bad before, getting into the numbers and obsessing over them can actually make it just as bad. It might feel better because the mm-hmm. foods you're eating might be a little more balanced. But you know, when I hear from you that you ate the same thing every day for six months, um, that makes me say, okay, probably want to pull back from counting calories, counting macros, counting steps. Like maybe go live your life a little bit and, and enjoy your workouts mm. and pay attention. Like I said, am I stronger? Can I deadlift more? Yeah. Can I bench press more? Do I feel more energetic? And, and rather than using the, the, the numbers metrics, use those metrics. Focus on those things. Have you ever done a, a straight one to five rep range kind of straight set approach and, and just like focused on that and, and saw, you know, where that took you? Yes, I, I've recently started tracking in terms of how much I'm lifting as well and if I gradually increase every week. And again, it's only been a lot, like maybe the last month or so, but I do see a gradual increase in terms of the, the reps and the sets I'm doing. Right. Uh, in terms of like, exercise. yeah, in terms of the rest in between, I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just wondering because I know a okay. lot of times I've had clients who've done the compound lifts but haven't really applied uh, enough of that rest period to you know really focus on uh, just the, the strength portion of it and not trying to get through the workouts um, so, so if I'm if I'm doing about 10 reps I normally take about a minute and a half to about two minutes of a, of a break and then start again okay. or do the the remaining of the sets that I need to do that's the normal kind of gap I have in between. That that's not that's not bad. I think that's yeah. okay. And I and I think Sal has got the best advice with the moving away from tracking so much. But okay. I do I do want to address that the, the fact that you've done that. So I think I I do like that because it brings awareness to where you're kind of mm-hmm. at. And when you told the rest of the story to Sal, it makes and I'll, I'll make the sense to you for why this is happening, right? So why do you feel like 2,500 calories and and you're putting on body fat? Well, because you ate you know, oats and eggs and boiled chicken for six months. I mean, you're talking about probably a thousand calories right there at most. And then with all the activity Mm -hmm. that you were doing, sure, you probably lost some weight uh, doing that, but you also trained your metabolism to slow down. So your metabolism adapted to that calorie intake of a thousand calories with 12,000 plus steps a day. And so anything above, you know, 1500 calories probably does feel like it's putting body fat on you. So that's so we can address that's the reason why you feel that way. But then I would also agree okay. with Sal that let's not get hung up so much on that that's an issue and start cutting the calories and go way back down. Let's start going off of how you feel and and pulling back on the five days of training. Uh, your your body type, where you're at, what you're trying to accomplish. I, again, MAPS Anabolic, I think would be – Do you, if you don't have MAPS Anabolic, we'll send that over to you. Do you own it or no? No, I've just got the no BS abs. I just recently purchased it last week, and I've got Sal's uh, uh, nutrition guide, which I really want to read. Okay, so we're, we're going to send MAPS Anabolic over to you. I want you to follow that. I actually want you to start with just two days a week. Start mm-hmm. with two days a week, full body routine. Follow the program as it's written and it's laid out. Scale back on some of the, the the crazy amount of activity that you're doing outdoors and stuff like that. As far as steps, you don't need to go. You don't need to go drastic. I don't want you to sit on the couch and be lazy from that. I mean, enjoy your life. Just do activity that you enjoy. Yeah. So, sure. if, so Rick it, Cooper did. Yeah. Don't be sure. don't be active for exercise. Be active for things you enjoy. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. But I think what we're trying to do is move you away from a mentality uh, and a mindset that's going to lead you down the wrong path. So. You know, you got your. Re- so here's the thing: for the next three months, just focus on getting stronger, and then, and, and and then, as far as activity is concerned, just do do stuff you enjoy. Don't worry about tracking your steps and am I walking enough? Am I swimming enough? 
you just do stuff that you enjoy and, and have fun, but focus on getting stronger for the next few months. After the next few months, then go ahead and see uh, you know, what your body fat percentage is, see how you weigh and all that stuff. And I bet you'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, especially if you take the advice and it sound that you grab the intuitive guy. So when you read that, uh, that's exactly yeah. the angle that Sal's going, right? So it's going to move you away from mm -hmm. weighing and measuring and tracking your food and starting to learn to just kind of listen to your body, eat when you're hungry, feed yourself correctly, and pay attention to the signals that make your body feel good. So read that and follow that as your guideline for nutrition and then stick to about a two to three day a week uh, strength training. Okay, so would you recommend that I immediately start doing the intuitive guide, or like just drop yeah. tacking? Yeah, the, the, the intuitive guide. When I feel, yeah, the intuitive guide is going to go into more depth with essentially what I'm talking about, but really mm -hmm. focus on strength. M make that okay. your goal, because here's the deal. Okay, I, I, and, and I, you know, I, like I said, I've worked with a lot of people, um, and it, you're. It sounds like you are. You know, you'll set yourself with a goal, and you'll be very focused on it. So we can't just take your your focus off of one thing and then not let it go anywhere else because it's going to find something. So take your focus and place it squarely on strength. I want to get stronger in the next three months. I want to be able to deadlift this much. I want to be able to squat this much. I want to be able to bench this much. Mm -hmm. Focus on that. And then the intuitive guide will help you with the nutrition part. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. I no really, really appreciate it. Thank no you. Awesome. No problem. Yeah, it's, um, you know, for most people, getting them to figure out calories and macros mm -hmm. and is, is a great step. For some people... It's the wrong direction. It yeah. just puts you in the wrong direction. Well, some people, you kind of got to rein back a little bit. Like he seems like a, you know, somebody that's going to pursue a goal and and do it, you know, down to the to the last like dotted line and, uh, you know, is very focused. And so, like a lot of times, it just needs somebody else, an outside perspective, to kind of, you know, say, hey, why don't we try like focusing more on recovery and maybe like backing off a little bit. Well, there is a, there is a very positive part of him tracking though because it gives us that insight. Had he not tracked like that, right. I wouldn't be able to know if he's eating low or not, right? He could be just totally underestimating or overestimating. But as soon as he told me the calorie intake that he's taking and he feels like he's gaining fat and the amount of activity that mm -hmm. he's doing between five days of training, all the outdoor activity, 12,000 steps a day, right away I go, okay, that's super low calorie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, his, what, what he should be at is probably closer to 3,000, 3,500 at least calories just to maintain, much less yeah. put on body. So that right away gave that away. When Sal started asking more questions about his relationship with food, and then we find out oats, hard-boiled eggs and boiled chicken. Yeah. I mean, that might not even be a 1,000 calories. No, that's barely anything. Yeah, you're talking about super low calorie right there. And while doing all that activity, I mean, he's just as slowed as metabolism. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I got clients. This is a hard conversation to have. It's a hard uh, thing to convince someone to do. But I can't tell you how many times I had clients take their focus entirely off the mirror, off the scale. I would tell people, take your scale, put it in the closet. Don't weigh yourself at all for the next three months. We're going to focus entirely on strength mm -hmm. and health. And then at the end of that three-month period, I'd say, all right, let's bring out the scale. Let's test your body fat yeah. just to see what would happen. And they would always be blown away. Yeah. Like, I, I, got, I got leaner. Yeah. I, got, I dropped 4% body fat. This is wild. Or, oh, my God, my, my weight is the same on the scale, but I dropped all this body fat and gained this muscle. I had no idea this would happen. Yeah, as a coach, I mean, your job is just reassurance that you're doing the right thing. Like They need to hear that constantly, somebody like this.